Okay, hello everyone. My name is Veronica and today I will uh, go through the basics of establishing and running your company as an artist. So I would love if you guys would help me uh, make this as relevant as possible for you. Uh, if you want to ask me questions or if you have any specific things you want me to talk about, then we can go through that. I will start by going through uh, the basics of, uh, let's see if this works, why um, you could actually start a company. When you are making art, for example, and selling your art, then starting a company is the difference between when you're having a hobby and when you're actually uh, doing business. So if you decide to start a company, there are both upsides and downsides by doing that uh, the good thing is that you can actually get paid and then you can pay taxes from whatever you get paid and you can also deduct costs which means that you only pay taxes for what is um, what surplus you are left with uh, so if you have any costs related to making art you can deduct that from your earnings but if you are on the edge between are actually making this into a business where you think you're going to profit over a long time or if you're just if the activity is a bit smaller and it's only a hobby um, then you should consider if you if it's the right time to start a company or if you should wait because especially if it's just a hobby then Scott the Totten does not want you to start a company they only want you to do that if you're actually making profits from it and that's because you can also deduct the costs, uh, which means that they don't want you to be able to do that if you're not also paying taxes and, and having a, a business. So there are also some reporting stuff that you need to think about before starting a company, uh, which I will go through a bit later as well. Uh, but if you have an income of more than 50,000 Norwegian kroner, then you are required to keep accounts which means that you need to save all the receipts that you, uh, if you have bought anything and you need to send a proper invoice and take care of everything for five years. Uh, so that if they want to check later, they can, you can have everything uh, in the same place and show whatever you have earned and how much you have spent. Every May 31st is the tax report day. So you need to uh, fill in a form and report how much you have actually earned. Because if you're employed somewhere, then uh, your employer will do this for you. They will, sh um, they will let you know, uh, let uh, everyone know at Skattetatten how uh, much they paid you and how much uh, taxes they have deducted from you. Um, but if you don't have an employer and if you have a company, then you are your own employer. So no one is doing that for you. So you need to do that yourself. So uh, if you decide to start a company, there are different organization forms that you can choose between. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to uh, let you know that this is uh, this course is recorded, so you can also watch this later. So if you're actually going to start a company and you want to, uh, you're not sure and, and you have other questions, you can always go back and watch this video again. Uh, you can also have uh, uh, like our email at Visp. We do um, we help you with these kind of things. If you're unsure of what kind of organization form you want to choose or anything, you can also ask us. Um, and if you want to ask me something right now, you could also use the chat function or the Q&A or raise your hand by asking me. Okay, so let's go through these different organization forms. Uh, there are many different organization forms to choose between and I will not go through all of them here but I will go through the most common ones and especially for uh, artists the enkel person for attack is the most common one that's the um, in English called sole proprietorship and this is the simplest form of organization it's one where it's only you and yourself as an owner of the company which means that no one else can own or co-own your company. And there's also no formal separation between you 
and uh, the company, which means that your economy is also the company's economy. You're not legally required to, for example, have an and a separate bank account that is only your company's bank account. It could be your personal one as well. Uh, but of course, I recommend having it as separate as possible just to, to have it easier for yourself. But um, legally, you're not required to do so. With an Ankel Personal for Talk, you also have unlimited liability, which means that you are 100% uh, liable for everything that your company does. So if you, for example, plan on doing a lot of risky business as um, taking up many loans and doing contracts that are more risky, uh, then I would recommend you to choose another organization form because it means that if your company has some liability that uh, the company cannot pay, then you as a person will have to pay that. Uh, but the good thing about Anki Passon for Talk is that is as I mentioned, it's very simple and it's less reporting, like the requirements for how much you need to report and how you, uh, anything you like you have to do throughout a reporting year. Uh, they're very, they're a lot smaller than, for example, with the other organization forms. So most people at least start out with Enkel Person for Attack. And uh, then that's what I recommend as well. At least start out with that one, especially for artists. That's the most common one. Uh, the bad thing about that is that you have limited social security rights, which means, for example, if you get sick or if you're having a, a sick leave or an, any other kind of leave, um, like parental leave or something like that, it's harder to like you have you are worse off than if you are employed somewhere or if you have an Aksjesalskap, which I will go through right now. So if you, for example, there's no employer who's saving uh, pension funds for you, so you need to do these things yourself. And then we have Aksjesalskap, which is limited liability, which is a good thing because it can be owned by several people. So if you are more people going to do something together and you don't want everything to just lie with one person, then you can create an Aksha Salskap together. And this only means that then you do not have this unlimited liability, which may sound like a scary thing. And it also may be a scary thing. So it's a good thing that if you are uh, more people together and you're going to do things that may be risky, then there's a separation between the business economy and the personal economy. So if you have auction sales gap and you go bankrupt, then they can't come for your house or your money or anything of your personal belongings. Then it's the whole company is its own kind of person. So that's, um, that's a good thing if you're several people together. The limited liability is that you only have, like you can only lose whatever you put into the company. So you have to start with the stock capital, which has to be at least 30,000 Norwegian kronor. And that's the most you can lose. You can't lose more than that if you go bankrupt. Uh, there are more accounting obligations by having a Aksjesalskap, which means that you need to report more things more often than with Ankel Passovotak. So you need to be aware of that before you start doing that. There's a lot of obligation with actually having an accountant and uh, reporting um, more than just your income and your expenses. And then we have another one called Amsvarle Salskap. It's a general partnership, which could be almost uh, described as different Enkel Person for Attack going together as one. So you actually have unlimited liability, uh, but you are several people, at least uh, instead of just one person. And there are a few different ways of, um, of arranging that. So if you are, for example, four persons, then you could be uh, either with a joint liability, which is the Ansvar Les Alskap, ANS. Um, and then you all have full liability for everything that the company does. Uh, the other one is Delt Ansvar, the DA, which is a shared liability, which means that you only have um, a responsible 
a responsibility for the share that you own in the company. So if you're four people and you have 25% each, then you're only responsible for your 25%. So if you want to go into that kind of arrangement, an organization form, which is pretty common as well, because it's easier and simpler to do than the Aksha Salskap, uh, then I would recommend going into the DA one, not the uh, joint liability, but the shared liability. And as I mentioned, if you have any um, issues like choosing your organization form, uh, there is a lot of good reading material at Scott de Tatum's web pages. And if you still are unsure, uh, you could contact, for example, us in VISP. We can also help you choose the right organization form. But if you are an artist and you want to sell art, then Enkel Person for Attack is usually the one for you. The two others is most, for example, if you are starting a gallery or an organization, or if you want to um, have some uh, events or anything that you want to do with more people, then it could be smart not arranging everything into one Enkel Person for Attack, but having some sort of um, division of, of responsibility between you. Okay, so if you are going to start a company and you want to start Enkelsperson for Attack, um, which I believe would be the most common one for you, uh, I will take you through that uh, form and how to do that. Um, because as I mentioned, um, you need to first make sure that you are actually doing something commercial, that you're not just having a hobby, but you're actually making it into a business. But if you're sure that it's a business, then you could go to Altin or um, Brønnesundregistrene, B-R-R-E-G dot uh, and look for a form called Samornet Registermelding. It's called Coordinated Register Notification. Um, but it's a not... Um, it's a yeah it's kind of sad for everyone not speaking Norwegian because this form is actually only available in Norwegian and that's why I will take you through this one because uh, I'm sure maybe you have like the Google Translate or anything um, for you uh, that you can use when you're filling out this thing but um, if not then we'll go through it so you can see how to actually do it. Um, and if you go to uh, this website, Bregg.ano, you can choose to have it in English, which looks like this. So you can just um, go into the website and press this on the left side, it's called business. So you come into this form called coordinated register notification. But the second you, like everything up until this point is uh, in English, but the second you press this blue button called start service, it just, this is what you see. You're suddenly in Norwegian. So you need to know Norwegian or have a Google Translate, or you can use this video as a guide to help you. So in this form, this is like a, a wizard form for everything that you want to do regarding your company. So this is where you start the company. But if you later on want to change or add something, then this is also where you do it. So you need to get back to the same form and you can, you can make changes. And that's really important to remember because if you uh, register a company because you are an artist and you want to sell art, but then in three years, you are asked to do a consulting job or um, anything else that you suddenly take um, get paid for and you send an invoice for that, you need to make sure that your company um, is able to do that by updating the description of your company. So that's why uh, you can also go in here and do it. It's really quick and it's automatically approved. So it's not really something you need to, to like uh, wonder about if you're able to do it or not, but you just have to do it just to make sure it's updated. And if you want to delete your company or if anything, then this is also the place to do it. So if you press the, the upper button, registrere ny virksomhet, uh, which means register a new entity and press next, you come to this one. Then you see all the different organization forms that you can choose between. And a lot of these are 
not necessary uh, for you, but this is the Anket Passon for Attack up here that you want to, um, to look at right now. And now there's also just a, a few um, lines here. It's called Registrering i Mervardiavistsregistre, which means the VAT, like um, Mervardiavist, which is the tax that you need to put on when selling goods. For most artists, you don't have to worry about this. Making and selling your own art is not eligible for those taxes. So you don't need to think about that. But if you do, for example, consulting services or other kind of um, services or selling other goods than art, then you may suddenly have to register for this. Uh, but if you're unsure of this, uh, we have different guides on this both while Googling on the internet or on BISP's web pages, it's pretty easy to like find information about what this means and if it's uh, applicable for you. Um, but if you're unsure, then you can also know that you can sell up to 50,000 Norwegian kroner before you need to even think about this. So if you have a lower income than that, you don't have to worry about that. And the last question here, uh, if you're going to register the entity in Foretagsregistra, that's uh, for most of you, that wouldn't be necessary. So you can press no on this one. And then you go on next, then you need to choose a name for your company. And the thing is that you need to, um, with Enkel Person Foretag, you need to also have your own name in the name of the company. That's because, as I mentioned, there's no separation between you and the company, like legally. So it could be your last name and with combination of something, or it could just be your name. That's the whole name of the company. That's also allowed. So you need to think about that. Um, and you need to have an address. So that could be, in most um, cases, it could be your own address or it could be another address. If you have a studio, for example, or an office or anything, then you can have, uh, then you can list that one up. And usually you also wouldn't have to, like this is just a standard, you need to have your email address, your phone number. Um, and if you have someone else, helping you or if you want them to contact someone else uh, then you could also uh, have like different contact uh, but, but this is pretty intuitive like these this part of the form is just filling out whatever they ask you to do and now we've come to a part where you need to describe what you're going to do in the company because you need, a, it's called an industry code, Nahrings-Koda, which is um, like four or five di digits that you need to, that says something about what kind of industry you are in. And you don't need to choose that code yourself, uh, but you need to describe what you're gonna do in the company. And you describe that in this field. And as I mentioned now, it's really important to mention everything that you may ever get paid for. So if you only are going to sell art, then you can write that. But if you're going to sell art and you're also going to sit in juries and you're also going to have um, consulting jobs or you're also going to paint houses, then write that. Because if not, it wouldn't be correct that if you suddenly send an invoice for painting a house and then uh, Scott may come back to you and say, oh, but you don't have a company that's able to paint houses and get paid for that. So it's no problem having like many different kinds of, of activities inside of one company, but you just have to make sure it's all mentioned uh, in this description. Okay, so uh, there's one question in the Q&A. Um, I'll answer right now. Can you have an individual tax form uh, and also another one if you also start a gallery or a structure? Uh, the answer is yes, because uh, when you, like every year, you anyways, you need to um, report your own individual tax form. And in this one, you report everything that is 
uh, for you, for example, if you have received any grants in your name, or if you are hired somewhere and you received any salary from someone, or anything, if you have a bank loan or anything that's just personal for you. And then you also report Enkelperson Foretag, which is your uh, which is uh, your personal company. But if you also have a gallery or a structure, another kind of, of structure, then, then there will be another one um, that would report only for that one. So yes. Okay, let's move on. Just continue asking questions if there's anything else that shows up. I'll just answer them as soon as I see them. Um, and then, as mentioned, the Enkel Person Vortag has to be, it's the same person who owns it and the same person who uh, runs it. So this has to be either your D number or your birth number and your last name. So that would just be your own information. Uh, a lot of you would answer no on this first question. It's about if you're going to have employees. If you have an Enkel Person Vortag, it's possible to have employees, but most of them don't. It's more, um, it's probably easier and better for you if you're going to employ people and have employees in that form, you should either have an auction sales cup. So that would be no. And you can choose if you want to have it with bookmol or Ninosk, but not English in some sort of way. <laughs> you can't have it in English. Okay, and uh, there's a question if the company has a general manager that would usually be yourself, so you can, you don't have to tick this box because you're automatically like the, the manager of the company. There's a question if you have a accountant. Um, you don't have to do that. If you have Akshisalskap, you need an accountant. Um, but you're not required to do so as an anchor person for the talk. So I wouldn't re recommend necessarily going into that first, unless this is totally Greek to you and you are having some kind of complicated issue in your company. But usually you wouldn't need this. An auditor, you, do, you don't need that either. Um, and procurer, that is just if you have uh, able someone else to to uh, do anything for you full macht and uh, usually that wouldn't be an issue either uh, an under entity is also something that you could um, have I don't think that's very necessary for you to have at least when you start a company but if you have uh, something you do and then you want to start as I mentioned you can have a lot of different activities inside of one um, one company and if you want to have that and but it's something completely different than what you were going to do at first then uh, you could maybe have like an under entity instead but that's something that they do for you you don't have to think about these things yourself it happens automatically and then you mentioned when you actually started doing this activity and um, then you just sign this, the form uh, and you're done. That's actually the whole process. And then it could take a few weeks, maybe a few days or a few weeks, depending on, on how much uh, Brennis and Registrana has to do. It's usually more busy around, for example, May, when everyone has to deliver their tax reports. Um, but otherwise, it would be pretty quickly. There's a warning on top here, which I think is also important to be aware of, is that once you register uh, a company, then everything, like all the um, information you give is uh, just, it's available to, it's open and available for everyone. So your address, for example, everyone can search that up or your phone number, everyone is supposed to be able to find that. So who will find that is definitely phone sellers, people who want to sell you some sort of um, ads in their magazine or uh, I, I've been called by them a, a million times myself uh, and say no <laughs> to them uh, because it's really easy to just be, um, uh, yeah, to, to say yes to that. But, but uh, you should just be aware of that. They will find you and they will call you. 
Okay, so when you have signed uh, this form, uh, you can this just like to control it. And if you have any uh, attachments that you have, usually you wouldn't need that. And then you send it. And once you actually have that company, you can start getting paid. So how to get paid? Uh, you can get paid through an invoicing software, which is the recommended way to do it. Uh, it could be, for example, I know a lot of Anquipasson for a talk and artists use uh, Fikem or Triple Tax or Conta. Those are the three most common ones uh, for small, because they're not very expensive. Um, and as I think especially Conta, you can send invoices for free. But the thing is that you, uh, they also have um different things that you can uh like add on for example you can use it as a full-on accounting service and you can um both create invoices and also deduct costs and have things uh, there there's a question could you write them in the chat oh the um, uh, the different software yeah uh i think you can see it if i write it here. Uh, okay, so the different uh, uh, the different invoicing software are Fikan, uh, Conta, um, The three ones I wrote right now are the ones very commonly used by small uh, companies. Uh, but there are also many others on the market. Um, so feel free to Google around and figure out what you use yourself. A lot of them have like a, a 30 day trial or anything that you can test out uh, before you start paying for it. So you can choose however you, you like to, to do that. Uh, but the most important thing you need to know is that you're not allowed to just make uh, an invoice yourself, for example, by with a Word document or just making one, writing one and sending it. Uh, it needs to be uh, numbered in ascending order that you can not choose the numbers. You're not supposed to be able to manipulate uh, the different numbers after you've sent it. So an invoicing software will prevent you to do that. Um, so uh, that's why I just I recommend doing it. It's like much, much cleaner and simpler to do that. Um, but there's also different ways to get paid, of course. One thing is to send an invoice, which also is probably the most common. But if you are at a, a fair, for example, or in a gallery, or you're somewhere out there selling uh, something, then you can also bring a payment terminal. For example, iSettle, or there are also different ones you, you can use. Um, that's also very simple, and you can use like a daily settlement. Uh, VIPs is also an option. Um, you're like technically you're allowed from a legal perspective to get paid via VIPs, uh, even though that's a personal account and not through VIPs Bedrift, which is the, the professional account. Uh, but I think in VIPs, in their terms and conditions, they tell you that you have to have the Bedrift account if you want to get paid for your company. So legally, you can use the personal ones, but not according to VIPs. So that's why you should um, establish a VIPs professional account, and then you can get paid through there as well. That's not, I think then VIPs, I'm not sure of the exact terms, but VIPs um, takes some sort of um, percentage from that. And then you also need to remember the art tax, Kunstavgiften, whenever you sell any art, uh, that's the 5% you need to top uh, on when selling something more than worth more than uh, 2,000 kroner. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, uh, just a few slides ago, if you uh, are going to get paid for something else than what you originally planned, then you need to update the company description. It's no problem, but you need to update it so it's correct. Uh, whatever is there is correct according to what you actually do and what you get paid for. Okay, so one thing that's nice to talk about is also uh, depreciation, which means that if you buy something 
expensive, which means more than 15,000 Norwegian kroner, then you cannot deduct everything at once. You can't, for example, if you make 100,000, you can just buy something for 100,000, so you're in zero, and then you don't have to pay taxes for it. That's the background for this. So if you buy something that's worth 100,000, you can only uh, deduct 20% of that, so 20,000. And then the next year, you can get 20% of that. And then the next year, 20% of that, and 20% of that, and 20% of that. This goes on on until you uh, reach that limit of 15,000. And then you can just deduct everything after you're below that limit. So there are different... Now this was uh, an, an example of 20%. But depending on what kind of, if it's a um, if it's a machine or if it's something like just used in the office or if it's a building, for example, if you buy buy a uh, an, a studio or something that you want to use as a as a company building, then uh, there are different percentages of that. But that's very easy to find which one you're going to use at Scott Detatman's web pages. And then a few words about budgeting, because budgeting is also something that people maybe find a bit like hard or stressful. But the thing is that Skatte Totten does not need your budget. You don't have, you're not legally required to keep a budget in any way. But if you, for example, are applying for a grant, then they would usually want you to have a budget with them. So then what I recommend is just, have a look at their reports so that you can actually see um, how they want you to report afterwards, how you spend the money. And then you can use the same fields while you also budget. So it's very easy for them to also see how you're going to use the money uh, and how it's going to, uh, to end up in the result. So uh, there are also a lot of different like budgeting um, templates or budgeting programs. One of those accounting programs that I uh, mentioned uh, just a few slides ago um, also have like budgeting functions that you can either just use or you can buy like as an add-on. Mm -hmm. And you can also just have it in a, in a Word or Excel document. So there's no um, like legal requirements on how you need to do that. And then just some uh, tips in the end, just to remember, is that make sure to keep your accounts regularly uh, and preferably in accounting software. That means that you don't want to, as I mentioned, the, the deadline for re tax reporting is May 31st every year. And you don't want to sit there uh, the day before uh, stressed out because you need to deliver this tax report tomorrow. It's really important to keep this deadline. Um, it's very easy to postpone it, but you need to remember to postpone it if you want to do that. But uh, it's much easier to just, for example, once a month, sit down and figure out everything that you did this month. Uh, did you get paid for anything? And did you spend any money? And what are the results? Take care of the receipts, put them in somewhere you remember, you could e either have them physically or you could take a picture and then you can throw away the receipts. So you can have them digitally as long as the picture is uh, readable. So you can actually see what it says. But if you do that, for example, once a month or twice a month or once every second month or whatever, what, uh, depending on your activity, then it makes it so much easier for you when you're going to deliver the report. And I also very much recommend you to use an accounting software because uh, from 2024, then everyone has to deliver their tax report through an accounting software. That's something new that they started doing this year and everyone has to do it until, like after next year. So I would recommend to just start using that so you get used to it. It's also really important to try as good as you can to separate your private economy from the business economy. 
because as I mentioned, you don't, you're not really legally required to do so, but it's very good for you if you want to like keep an account on how much you're actually spending and uh, how much you earn and when you're going to report. It's also important to be aware of like what you can deduct. As I mentioned, you can deduct all costs that you have in relation to your company. So if you have any costs uh, related to, for example, making an artwork or selling an artwork or uh, any travels that you do like in uh, your company or um, you're having an exhibition in another part of the country or in another country, all of these are costs that you can deduct. But you need to just like a, a thumb, rule of thumb could be that you can only deduct things that you wouldn't have otherwise if you didn't have the company. So for example, if you didn't, uh, if you were not an artist, then you probably wouldn't have a lot of expenses for art materials. So then you, okay, then you can deduct that. But you would probably have to pay rent and buy lunch every day, uh, even though you didn't have a company. So that's something you cannot deduct from the company. So it's a good thing to separate these just to be very clear um, because the chances of getting checked by Scott the Totten, they're not very huge, but if they want to check you, then you need to have everything in order because they want to check everything. Okay, so if you have any questions, you could call Altin or Skattetaten or chat with them. One uh, trick I have is that if you go to Skattetaten and then the first question can be, can I talk to a human being? Because they have a chat bot, which um, is pretty useless. <laughs> and, but if you just uh, right away ask, can I speak to a human being? Can I speak to a human being? in the region, then uh, you get straight away set over to a human and they answer pretty quickly. So that's a much faster way to go about than trying to call them because that's also a long, uh, also a long queue. And they can answer most of your questions, but we can also help. So you can also um, call or email us at VISP. And another thing that's really important is to put money for taxes aside as soon as you get paid. It's a good thing to think that maybe 30% of your income will disappear in taxes. So make sure to just have that on a separate account so that you are not suddenly getting a huge invoice from Skattetaten that you cannot pay. One thing is really uh, good is to do like the advanced tax, which is for good Scott that you can do by going to Skattetaten and they can, uh, they can um, send an invoice to you. Uh, I think it's four times a year and then you can pay it regularly instead of having one huge invoice at the end of the year when they have known what, how much you made, then you can just uh, split it in, in several smaller payments. That's a really good thing to do. Then you won't have to pay interest either. That is what I had um, for this. So if you have any other questions, uh, you could either ask them now uh, or you can ask them by sending me an email. Um, it's, we also have a lot of helpful articles and information about these things on our websites. So you can go there and just and read and check whatever you want to, um, to read about. And if you don't find the answers, feel free to, to contact us. Thank you. Okay, so there's a question. How does this work between countries? Mm, I don't know if you want to 
specify what you mean by how does this work. Um, if you have a company, for example, if you already started a company in another country, or if you want to, like you can perfectly find sell your services or sell art to another country. Um, but where you are uh, established and when where you are paying your taxes, that depends on um, a lot of different factors. So if you start a Norwegian company, then you would uh you would pay taxes uh in norway um for but if you have a lot of work in other countries then you would pay taxes in those countries but that's a bit different from country to country i'm not sure if that answered your question of or if it's something specific that you thought about okay If there are any other questions, feel free to ask them. So the question is, where will this video be available to rewatch? Uh, and it will be up on VISP's YouTube channel. So you can rewatch there. And there's a question, can you recommend any accounting software? Um, yes, that's uh, actually those three I mentioned a bit earlier, those are uh, invoicing softwares that are also functionable as uh, accounting software. So when you send an invoice, um, they're automatically registered in your accounts. So they make it automatically for you. So you can also go in there. I think at least for FICAN, it's uh, you just automatically do that and you can deduct all your costs. You can uh, take a picture of your receipts and put in the account uh, in, into the software, and then it happens um, automatically. Um, but I think, for example, Conta, it could be only an invoicing software, but then you can add on more and pay and decide how much you want to build if you want to have a full on accounting software or only the invoices or different kind of functions. So I would still say those three. Okay, so if there are no other questions, I will say thank you so much for attending. And as mentioned, don't hesitate to ask us or anything. If you have any questions or anything, you if you rewatch this video and want to have some other questions, um, then just let us know and we'll answer you the best we can. All right, thank you.